Hello open source silicon enthusiasts and welcome back to another monthly update. This time we're looking at what's coming up in May and what happened in April. So let's get started with something a bit silly. You've noticed that I've lost Alan Turing in the background and I've replaced it with some pictures which I can move around so they're always at the right height whether I'm standing or sitting and I got nerd sniped into even making them gesture controlled. So now let's move on to something actually related to open source silicon and this is work done by Proppy who's been working for Google doing developer experience and he's managed to put the first part of my course into a Google Collab Colab notebook which is uh, like a Jupyter notebook um, and we can run and simulate uh, the Skywalter PDK inside the Jupyter notebook which is super cool and he's also now got the uh, GDS flow so we can go from a design to generating the GDS and you can see he put that to use here working with Olof Kindgren on serve trying to find the best set of parameters to get the best PPA on serve. Teo has been doing some very interesting work on optimizing adders and we've now got a Yosis plugin that can be used to give Yosis hints on whether to optimize for power performance or area. Um, he's been building on top of Proppy's work so he can use this uh, online collab to actually get the PPA results from the different types of adders all done on the cloud. And he's going to be doing a presentation about that work on Tuesday, which is open to the public. So if it sounds interesting, check out this page on the Yosis HQ blog and join. We're going to be starting off at 5.30 p.m. Central European Summertime on Tuesday, the 10th of May. Quick reminder to get your projects in for MPW6. I'm going to be doing a walkthrough video soon to show you all the way from the beginning to the end to get something submitted, so look out for that. Subscribe to my channel and my newsletter to learn more. And we've already got 24 results uh, showing for designs on MPW6. If any of those things look interesting, then let me know if you want to find out more and I can always invite the author for an interview. The Level Up Your RTL call, digital design review call, looks like it's going to be going ahead. The last thing I've got to do is work with White Quark and TNT to fix the dates and then you'll be able to buy tickets from the website. I'm trying a pricing experiment here because I know that my course is sometimes too expensive and I want to be able to make it more accessible. So we'll see how this experiment goes and then maybe move it on to the Zero to ASIC course as well. Talking about lowering the barrier to ASIC design, I've come up with another crazy idea, which is to try to put 450 designs on one chip Ignite shuttle. So that costs $10,000. Then we can spread that cost out between lots of people. So this would be a cloud-based uh, drag and drop system with a very limited number of standard cells. Uh, we can use some kind of editor in the cloud. Ideally, it would be a bit like BlockPy, where you can do some drawing, drag and drop, but you also get to see the HDL. Um, every person gets 70 by 70 microns, which is indeed very small, but still would let you put 50 to 100 gates on there. And then we uh, concatenate all of those together, uh, buy a chip Ignite shuttle, um, and then put some chips on this little board that lets you choose which um, design should be active. And then you've got your eight ins and your eight outs. And one way that I'm thinking about making this even more affordable is we have 270 um, tickets where you get your uh, chip on a board for $100 plus shipping and then 170 tickets where you can get your design on but no board. And then that means that you could do a collaboration with a group of people, say for 10 people, you buy one expensive ticket, nine cheap tickets and you get $32 per person and then you can still get your board back and see if it works afterwards and share it between the group. So if that sounds interesting then get in touch. I'm looking for collaborators especially on the cloud side, on the, um, the web page stuff, the drag and drop stuff, that's stuff that's completely outside of my experience. I don't know how to do it. Event news now and we're starting off with Chips Alliance. Uh, they've got their biannual Chips Alliance Spring event on April the 19th. So check out the speakers and register, get in touch with them. It's looking like a really interesting event. Matt Guttaus has announced that Woset is happening again. That's not going to happen for a little while off, but it takes a while to get prepared. So take a look at the website and see if you want to get involved. I was on the review board last year and I read some very interesting papers and I hope to be involved again. 
Chipflow has launched their first video that was done by Myrtle Gatecat Shah and I did the editing and it's a really great talk by Myrtle and maybe my favorite part is this part where we're talking about using Amaranth to build quite a complicated SOC and then the update at the end on MBW6 where Myrtle shows how Chipflow has made a application for an SOC that can boot Linux. So if that sounds interesting, then make sure to check the video and subscribe to the new channel. And now for some XX exclusive news. We've just heard that the MPW2 wafers are out of Skywater Foundry, and the next step is packaging and then distribution by eFabulous. So that's really exciting. Watch this space to find out more as we get the news. And finally, a lovely photo from Maximo of the MPW1 chips I sent. They took a long time in customs to get through, but uh, just look at this. What a lovely picture. So thanks very much, Maximo. Uh, really appreciate it. So that's it for this month's update. Let me know if I missed anything in the comments. And if you want me to plug your event or your project, then just get in touch for next time.